So multiplying matrices or you know, the product of two matrices. So matrix multiplication is when you multiply one matrix by another, another matrix. Now it's really important that when you come to multiply matrices, you understand the order of those matrices, okay? Because unlike ordinary multiplication, you can only do the multiplication in cert certain circumstances. And that's when the number of columns in the first matrix equals the number of rows in the second. If this is not true, then the multi mul the matrix multiplication is not defined. Notice it's not zero, it's not defined. Okay. So for matrix multiplication uh, to be defined, the order of matrix one, so the first matrix that we do, that's the number of columns. Order of matrix two, number of rows, they are the same. You can see I've indicated there with that little diagram that you've got to have the same number of columns in the first matrix as the, as the number of rows in the second matrix. This means that the order that we multiply matrices in is important. So unlike normal, you know, to normally you know, multiplying two numbers together, you know, three times six is the same as six, six times three, here it does make a difference. All right. So the order of the product matrix, you know, the matrix found by multiplying those two matrices together is found from the rows of the first matrix and the columns of the second. Okay, so in order to do a multiplication of two matrices, the number of columns in the first matrix must be the same as the number of rows in the second matrix. Now, once you've got those, um, once they are the same and you're doing the multiplication, the end result matrix is going to have an order where it has the number of rows as defined by the first matrix and number of columns as defined by the second matrix. So that's how we get the order of the answer like that. So while most of the time we'll do a lot of the multiplication on our CAS calculator, you really do need to understand how um, matrix multiplication works by hand. Okay, you need to understand the process of what is going on. This will help you understand more deeply what yeah, what is going on and understand you know, putting the matrices together. And this is what we're looking for, understanding. So here I've got two matrices. So matrix A is two by two and matrix B is two by three. Now this means we can find matrix AB, which is the two matrices times together, you know, AB. Now we can find it because those two are the same. Okay, so this means matrix AB can be found. Now AB, is going to be of the order two by three. And we get that from here. Okay, so I have to multiply the rows by the columns. So what does this mean? I need to multiply my rows my rows by my columns. Okay, so to get this first element, so in the element that will end up being A, B, row one, column one, 
I get row one and I times it by column one. I go one times five plus three three times six it's here. Okay. Clear a bit of that off. Okay. To get, let's look at this one now. That is row two, column one. So A, B, row two, column one. So here I've got two times by five plus four times by six. And you can start to see now why the number of rows, sorry, the number of columns had to equal the number of rows. Okay. So, right. Let's look at this next element. So this is now row one, still, still row one, but now it's column two. So I need two times, let's do that again, row one times by column two. So now I need to times one times by seven plus three times by eight. You can see that there. And so on and so forth. You can see I've worked it down until we get to our final element, our final matrix here. So you've got to remember we multiply the rows by the columns all the time. Now, Find BA. Notice here I was finding A times B. Here I want to find B times A. However, the number of columns does not match the number of rows. Because of that, BA cannot be found. So BA is not defined. Please again note I'm not saying zero, I'm saying not defined. You'll remember that we have that zero matrix. BA is not defined. So this is, this box here is saying what I was saying before, that it matters the order that we do it in. Unlike, you know, numbers where you can go you know, four times six is the same as six times four. That is not true in matrices. Okay, it's not true in matrices. Okay, let's do a worked example. Then I might pause it for this part. So here I've got the number of desktop and notebooks computers sold by four stores is given in the table. So we've got here it all that information in a table. If desktop computers were priced at $1,500 each and notebook computers were sold at $2,300 each, use matrix operations to find the total sales figures for each store. In other words, you know, how much money have they made through these sales? So the sales figures, we've represented this table as this matrix. You can see the columns are again representing the type of computer. The rows are representing the stores. So I want to know the total sales figures for each store. In other words, you know, I want to know how much each store has made for that day or whatever it is. 
So we're going to need to end up with a four by one matrix. Okay, we don't need it broken down into how much they've made from desktops and how much they've made from notebooks because it has said the total sales figures. So we want to combine that. That's why we're wanting to end up with this four by one where each row is a store and the column shows the total sales figures for that store. Oh, I should have closed that bracket, shouldn't I? So we need to multiply the four by two sales figures by two by one matrix. Why is that? Because I want to end up with this four by one matrix. This, the sales figures is a four by two. We want to end up with a four by, sorry, a four by one. So to do that, these have to be the same in order for us to do the multiplication. And this here gives us the order that we're going to end up with. Okay, so this tells us the order of the matrix that we're going to be multiplying this one by. Okay, so the matrix to find the total sales. You'll see here the 1500 for the desktops and the 2300 for the notebooks. Okay, so total sales all there times by the figures. You can see, okay, 10 times 1500 plus 4 times 2300. And that makes sense when you think about it from, if we were just, without using matrices, if I just gave you this information, told you this amount and wanted you to figure out, you know, how much each store, you know, received that day, what would... What would you do? You'd be going, okay, well, that's 10 times 1500 plus 4 times 2300. So we're doing the same thing, but now in a matrix. Okay, so we end up with the total sales figures there. All right total sales figures of each computer at each store. Okay, so here we were wanting total sales figures for each store. Not that, you know, we don't want it broken down into, you know, which computer was sold, but now we do. Okay, so now we've got to think about, well, how am I going to set that up? All right. So we need to know sales figures for each device at each store. We, so we need to have eight elements, don't we? We need to have, let's sketch this out. You can think for each store, they've got, you know, like that, don't, don't we? The store A, B, C, D, and then, you know, desktop, and notebook etc okay so we've got to have the that eight elements so we're going to end up the matrix of the order four by two so our original you know, matrix representing our sales is four by two we need to end up with the four by two matrix now, this means that's got to be two, doesn't it? For these to match, that means that also has to be two. Okay, how do we do this? Well, we're going to be very strategic in where we place our things. So we've got here our price matrix. 
So you can see our leading diagonal has those sales figures on them. Yep. That's our leading diagonal has the sales figures on them. The others are zero. Okay. You might be wondering well, why is that zero? Well, let's go through the multiplication and then you might see what we're doing. So we've got here our original matrix of all the sales figures and then this new price matrix. All right, let's go for the multiplication and see what's happening. I've got 10 times 1500. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? We've got 10 of these types of computers and that price plus four times zero. Okay, so that four times zero, you're just going to end up with zero, aren't you? So effectively, you only end up with that calculation, which is what we want, isn't it? Then let's look at this second one. 10 times zero plus four times 2,300. So we only end up Yeah, with that part, what we're interested in. Let's look at store four for a change. So three and two. So three times 1500 plus two times zero. Yeah, you've just got that bit because this bit here is just zero. Then for this element, we've got three times zero plus two times 2,300. So that's how we end up with our final, final total sales figures for each computer at each store. So, the store that had the highest sales figures for desktop computers. So that was the first column and we can see, well, that's store A and total sales. We go back to our total sales. We can see, well, that's um, store C there.